Hey everyone, this is Ashley with CTN Arena Digitals. Um, I'm going to show you a tutorial today on how I use um, the Flaming Pear plugin in Photoshop. Um, it's not mine, it's through a different um, company, and the version I have is free, and I'll, I'll link it in the um, description. Um, I believe it's still free, but they also have like an upgrade um, that you can purchase. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that in the, des the description. I just wanted to do a tutorial on um, how I use it in Photoshop. Um, so I'm using one of my framed curtain um, backdrop overlays in Photoshop. And I already um, got my subject into the photo. I have lots of tutorials already showing how to do that. Um, if you look at my channel, you can find easily find one. Um, so with these framed curtain backdrops, they're on like seamless paper. And if you are familiar with seamless paper and editing in Photoshop, you know that it easily creates banding. Um, and sometimes it's just, in, at least for me, impossible to get rid of. So I like to add either a texture overlay, which I have videos on that as well, um, or I like to add a little bit more to the image like a reflection um, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So just have your photo flattened to the background layer. Um, after you install the plugin in Photoshop, which they have it, they give you instructions on how to do that. I'm not going to give instructions on that because honestly I don't remember and that it's, it's their product um, to do that. So mine's already installed and it's going to be under your filter tab. Um, I'm gonna, and it's down here. I'm gonna go down to Flaming Pair and Flood. That's the plug, what the plugin's called that I'm using. And let's see if I can. Okay, hopefully you can see this. So there is a bunch of options over here. As you can see down here, it's already starting. So the horizon is the most important part. That's where your flood is going to start. And you, like, I could do it here and it would just, be like her toes and her feet were in the water. Um, but I want it to start about where her toes are at on the um, backdrop. So if you if you can see if you go down, it brings it up, which that looks pretty cool, even though, you know, um, if you bring it up, it starts to go down some more. Um, and you can play with this as much as you want. I go back in all the time and change it. That looks good. Um, okay, now offset. Like I said, this is like, there's so many options. You just kind of have to play around with it. Off, offset just moves it. Um, perspective, this is like what your water's gonna look like, basically like, um, what the ripples are going to look like. Altitude as well. I, I, I do almost every single photo difference. If you, if you bring the altitude all the way down, it's more of just like a still water reflection. It doesn't really have ripples in it. Waviness, again, the kind of um, ripple effect you're looking for. Brilliance is going to be how bright how blurry it is. Size doesn't really ever do anything. Um, this, this doesn't really do anything. I've never messed around with any of these before. I always just um, keep it at normal. But oh, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to see what this looks like. Okay, I don't really like that. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go up to undo. I'm going to duplicate my layer. I'm going to go back into flaming pair. I'm putting that back on normal. Um, and then I'm gonna actually going to bring this up a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to try right there because I want it to be the 
there's so many options. Oops. Okay. Let me try that. Okay. That's more so what I'm looking for. Um, create a layer mask. You can do this too, or I want the water a little higher by where the curtains are. I don't want it on her feet as much, and I want it to blend a little bit more. See, it's on her toes. I don't want that. Brush it off of her toes. I could have done a little bit better job on my shadowing, but I was not too worried about it because I was just trying to get this tutorial done. Okay. And I would probably add a little bit more blur going back into it, but as you can see, it hides the banding. Um, so we can flatten that. And then there's still some banding up here and I can just go into my textures you know I already have a tutorial that shows how to do this but <clears throat> it's fitting for this one so I want to make that black and white because I don't want the texture to have color and hide it for now Select subject, but I also want to select the curtain because I don't want the texture to be on the curtain. And I can brush it off. good enough for that sake. <clears throat> Duplicate. Um, I'm actually going to, I've had a couple people message me about this, how to get it behind the subject. They're, they have Mac and they don't have Alt key and it's not working for them. Um, so when you select, you duplicate the layer, create the layer mask into invert. I um, make sure that the layer mask is selected. Control or Command I to invert it. And then if you don't want to do the alt and click between the layers, you can just right click the top layer here and create clipping mask. Um, and then I'm going to use probably soft light. Yeah. I'm going to add blur to it. Okay. And then obviously I would brush it off areas, brush it on certain areas, but, um, Do that, I just brush it off, <clears throat> off my curtains here. I'll brush it on back here. Just doing this quick to show. And down here needs it. And I would go in and fine tune, taking it off the curtains. And as you can see, no more banding. Oh, don't forget to brush it off there too. Off our flood. Because you wouldn't really see it much on there. You can leave some of it, but Okay, started with just that, ending with 